it's about time. So I got the Microsoft Surface Book 3 to be my new computer as of seven years in the running, so it'd take a few seconds just to open this up. You can only do this once, so I hope this shot looks good. It has like a new computer smell. Similar to a new car smell, but a little bit more like like it's been sprayed with um, sanitizer. That looks pretty sweet. Pretty excited, but before I get this all set up, let's rewind for a second. Just realized that entire last shot was a little too dark, so Maybe I'll do it again in seven years. But speaking of seven years, seven years ago, 2013, this is when I got my, what was my current computer, was the 2013 MacBook Pro with um, a retina screen for photography. This was the computer that I got to go to college with me back when I started my journey at UNC. And it lasted pretty well. And I basically, after computer after computer came out, I still stuck with this because I still managed to do everything. It was still calibrated correctly for everything I needed to do. Even though I did get the screen and keyboard insanely dirty by being a college student, it lasted pretty well. But then the problem I was having was earlier this year, 2020, about late February, early March, the computer just got to the point where it couldn't keep updating and handling the current Adobe software to the point where the computer was as updated as it's going to get by Apple. And the minimum levels of the Adobe programs are way too high for the like most updated version of Apple. So I was stuck between this rock and hard place where my computer couldn't get better and there wasn't a less complex version of the programs I needed to the point where I basically couldn't run Adobe on this and the programs that I had weren't running on this currently. Basically Adobe crashed and it would basically open and close and open and close and never actually let me start editing anything on this. So this computer became basically useless for what I needed it to do. It still does all the regular computer things I use a computer for, but I couldn't edit on it anymore. So what I did, my dad was nice enough to let me borrow his more updated Mac for a few months until I had to give it back to him. This computer behind me, which my friend built, he let me use it occasionally if he wasn't using it so I could do more complicated things on Premiere and Lightroom. So then the question is, if my computer was basically seven years old, why didn't I try to replace it earlier? And that's because I did try to replace it in 2018. I bought the Gigabyte Aero 15 during the holiday season because I really wanted a new computer because I wanted to play newer games. I wanted better editing kind of software. But the problem was I had it for a few weeks and I kept having issues with it. Every time it updated, we ran into an issue. I'd have to go to the Microsoft store. So with someone who knows something about Windows computers and just try to have it get fixed or have someone look at it. And it basically came down to several things and the computer failed and I had to send it back. I got a full refund, but that experience made me realize I don't want like a third party computer. I want to buy a computer from a company who has a physical store I can go to. And as a warranty where if any single thing happens to the computer, they just give me a new one or they fix it kind of deal. So I decided I really wanted a Microsoft computer. Switching from Apple because Apple unfortunately can't run a lot of the stuff that I want to use it for, which is some of the games I play with a lot of my friends that's only on PC. So I was waiting for Microsoft to find a computer that I really want to use, and they had the Surface Book 2 out. And the Surface Book 2 had been out for a year, looked really nice, but it was kind of in that position where I kind of just wanted to wait for the new one to come out, and I didn't, really didn't want buyer's remorse about buying the second model and then having the third one come out and be so much better in a new kind of time frame where you just kind of buy something and the new version comes out immediately after and then just go like, oh, kind of deal. So the new one is supposed to come out, the following October, so it's like, I can wait eight months. I can, this is still working, this is fine. So I waited eight months. Long story short, the computer didn't come out when it was supposed to. Microsoft released a new version of everything that they have, except for the computer they wanted. So it's like, 
Well, there's only one thing left that I could be working on, and it's the computer that I want, so I'm still gonna stick with this. I'm gonna stick it out, I'm gonna deal with it. And that was fine, and then I basically, early March, late February, this decided to stop working, and I was just kinda stuck with, do I fold and buy a computer from a different company, like Dell or Asus, which had good computers, but they didn't do exactly what I wanted them to, or do I wait for the Surface Book 3? And thankfully I did wait, because now I have it. All right, so the model I got was the Surface Book 3, 15 inch Intel Core i7 with 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte drive of storage. If I really want more storage, I'll just use an external SSD instead of paying the extra $400 for one terabyte. Touch screen detaches to a tablet or can flip over. It's the best gaming on the Surface. I know there are better gaming computers out there, but I really wanted an everything in one kind of computer. A lot of people have been like, who would buy this computer because it's not the best at anything it's just really good at everything and that's exactly what i need i need a computer that's good at editing and a computer that can play the games i want it doesn't have to be on the highest settings it just has to get the job done if you really want more of a deep dive on this i'm really not good with computers i don't know a lot about it so all the fancy numbers and stuff that companies advertise mean nothing to me i always ask my roommate which computer should I get or what does this mean? Is this good? So if you want a better deep dive on the actual specs, there's plenty of other YouTube videos out there for that. This is more just a vlog of me talking about how this is super practical for me to use and I need to set this up now. So just give me one moment. Sorry, Adobe just takes forever to download any of their products. So still waiting. I guess while I'm waiting, I could go through what else is in this box. Instruction booklet. Piece of paper. Piece of paper. Cardboard. Charger. Looks just about as bulky as the Apple one. It's a little USB thing right there. I wonder if I can also charge something while this is plugged in too, so I can charge maybe my phone and my computer. That's cool. And that's it, really yeah, just more cardboard underneath. Even the cardboard has like that new computer smell. And I really just wonder if it's a factory smell, kind of like how it is with new cars. It just smells how all the chemicals and nonsense. That back in the box. Let's see, I guess I could look up how I detach this. Let's see, detach key number nine. The about here, so I think it's this button right here. Probably not gonna try to detach it until it's done installing the software I'm trying to. Finally, I can't verify your subscription status. Are you connected to the internet? Okay, Adobe. Since Adobe's being difficult right now, I'm gonna troubleshoot this later, but now I'm just gonna use all the features of the computer that I was looking forward to using, just using basic computer stuff. And I'm gonna see how great it actually is. So let's dive into that. All right, now the little handbook says I literally just have to hit this button. So let's see how it goes. That's cool, it's got facial recognition. So this is totally just using this computer in a tablet form. Honestly, it feels pretty cool. Oh, that's sweet, so. You've got the regular horizontal view, but then if I hold it sideways, it switches to a vertical one, that's pretty sick. Let's see. Got a double touch to open up stuff search. If I need to search something, a little keyboard comes up, just like a regular tablet, I guess. I don't know why I'm finding this so much fun. 
Let's see. Let me Google myself or my website. JC Shift Numbers 95 L I V E. Nope, hit the wrong dot. So let me just try this link. Search for JC 95 L I V E. Search. Bam, website pops up. This is pretty sweet. The touchscreen is pretty reliable. It flows very nicely. That's a plus. I do have to get used to double tapping because it's still kind of set up like a computer where you need to double click for it to open up faster. Which is still weird that computers do that. Let's see what else. Let me try opening up Photoshop one more time. It kept crashing on me because Adobe couldn't connect, but I'll try it. Adobe Photoshop. So pretty sick. Yeah. We can't verify your subscription status. Are you connected to the internet? Yes, I am. Try again. An error as a kid. We need to quit Photoshop. So I guess I gotta contact Adobe for that. Let's see. Platform just looks cool because it's like almost like a book. Let me, let me try doing, let's see, YouTube. Bam. This is, this is going to be so much fun to play with. So one thing to note as well, this still is in a tablet form. The only input you have is the headphone jack. You do have a place for the charger cord to go right at the bottom if you just want to charge and use it in a tablet form, but you won't be able to plug in any USBs or SSDs or anything. You'd have to put the computer drive back in or the keyboard back on to be able to do any of those kind of things. So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna play around with that right now. So to put the computer back on or the tablet or a like screen, I guess you should say, to the keyboard, you basically just line up the bottom of the tablet with these little hinges on the keyboard and just slide it right on. But I already did that a few times. So I'm gonna try just doing it backwards to see if that's how you bend it. So yeah, one thing to note is this little part that bends will only bend if the tablet or monitor is attached to the computer itself or keyboard as I keep saying. So it's the same feature if I hold it vertically, it shifts, go back to horizontally, changes. And since I've got the keyboard plugged in, I'd be able to use the USBs, the SSD, the um, Thunderbolt I think, and then the charging tab is back on the side. But now to get into like, why would I want a two-in-one computer that can become a tablet and go back to a computer or be able to fold over backwards when there's other tablets out there or there's better computers that like, would have been a lot cheaper but can't do this function? And it's kind of all stems from, I wanted an all-in-one computer that I could use traveling and be able to use it literally anywhere I was physically. And what I mean by I'm physical, I mean by, think about when you use a computer. When you're in your home or you're in an office, you're typically at a desk, but sometimes you need to get real close into detail as a lot of photographers do. Sometimes I don't want to zoom in, sometimes I'll literally like hunch over and literally push my face into the computer. With this, I won't have to do that as much. Basically sitting up straight and then trying to lean in to see it, I'll just be able to push the screen back and be able to just zoom in or like lean over just a little bit instead of having to get to make sure that my eye level is literally with the monitor. I have to push it so far back that then, then you risk like glare or something shining on your computer which makes it difficult to see. Worst case, I can just push it into a tablet and bring it a lot closer to myself without having that bulky keyboard in the way or flip it over. The weight really isn't an issue because I lift heavy camera gear anyway, so the fact that it's almost four pounds doesn't bother me at all. I can hold it in my arm or most of the time I'll just be holding it in my lap. So the weight doesn't make anything. It's just like the ability to use a computer at its full strength regardless of what kind of formation it's in, just makes it so much easier and makes this computer almost perfect. Long story short, this computer has a bunch of awesome features to make it a lot more useful and practical around the house, especially if I'm traveling or in a cramped space, I can kind of angle the computer to be whatever orientation I needed to to make it a lot easier for me to use. I'm excited to learn how to use the touch feature a little bit better. I didn't get the Surface Pen to use to draw on the computer because I saw a lot of negative reviews about it, so I'm probably gonna potentially get a third party one or borrow someone's Surface Pen just to try it out. I'll let you guys know how that goes in a later video. Just super excited to use this all-in-one computer. It's a 
edit all day and then play games with my friends at night. Hoping this computer runs well, I just need the games at medium settings, not asking a lot, which is why this device is perfect. A lot of people are wondering why, who would get this device? I would get this device because it does everything I need to at a high enough performance where I'm not upset that it's not the best gaming computer, but it just needs to do what I need it to do. So, as always, since I forgot my catchphrase at the beginning, here it is. Boom. Catchphrase. Super awful. Super cringy. But that's what I'm going with right now. But as always, I'd like to end my videos by saying, let's recap.